Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on Fourier transforms. Now in previous videos we looked at certain shifting theorems. We also defined what the Fourier transform was and its inverse transform and we computed a few transforms. Now in this pr presentation I'm going to show you a very interesting theorem of Fourier transforms known as the convolution theorem. Now the importance of this theorem uh, basically lies in the application of Fourier transforms to the solutions of partial differential equations. And in particular, the convolution theorem is used to solve very famous problems like the, the heat equation or problems involving the heat equation and uh, Laplace's equation. And now I'll, I'll show you the applications of the convolution theorem in other, other videos, but the idea of this presentation is just to define uh, or uh, yeah, uh, mention the convolution theorem and to prove it. Okay, so before we mention the theorem, what is a convolution? Okay, well, the convolution of two functions f and g, denoted by this f star g, is just basically one of the one of the um, functions shifted either f or g, then multiplied by the other function, and then integrated over the whole real line. Now you might think that's a bit of a funny definition, where, where, where does that come from? Well, we know because the um, Fourier transform is an is a, a integral uh, transform, it's, it's a linear operator. Okay, So if you basically uh, want to compute the transform of uh, one function plus another function, you can just compute the transforms individually and add the result together. So the question now arises, if you have the mul uh, two functions multiplied together and you want to take the transform, is the transform of a product just the product of the transforms? Well, the answer is no. But if you define, uh, somehow define or, or, or rethink your idea of multiplication, and I'm using that in very loose terms, then you can, you can get um, those ideas to, to work. Okay, so this sort of star, it's, it's not multiplication, it's like a modified sort of version of multiplication, I guess. So this is, this is the actual um, identities from the convolution theorem. Essentially it's the following, if you um, want to take the transform of f star g, then it's this constant times the product of the two transforms. Okay, so we use the f hat notation, sometimes we use the curly f notation, and um, uh, if you want to take the inverse transform of the product of two transforms, f hat and g hat, then that is just this constant times the convolution. Okay. So, you know, what, what's what, what is trying to be uh, um, sort of related to there is just the products of transforms. Okay, so I'm going to um, prove that result now, and um, in other videos I'll show you the, uh, the application uh, when we solve uh, partial differential equations and things like that. Okay, so... Let's see if we can prove these things. Now essentially the proof just involves um, switching the order of integration with, uh, with the double integrals. Okay, uh, and you would learn that in a course, um, in a course, in a, a third course in calculus. Okay, let me just get uh, another note here. Okay, just before we get to the proof, let's remind ourselves or ourselves of what a Fourier transform is. Now, Fourier transform is an integral transform. We use this type of notation, and the uh, inverse transform is also an integral transform. Okay, so basically, if you wanted to write say f of x out here, you could actually take this because this is f hat and plug it in here. Okay, so.
from our definitions. Uh, so we're going to prove this here. The transform of the convolution is just the following. Well, we would put the uh, convolution in there, okay? And basically, what, what I mean, it doesn't matter which one you put in, I'm going to put in, in this here. So what we would do is replace f of x with this whole improper integral here, okay? Okay, so let's do that. So by definition, uh, this is either that or that. Let's use that one. Okay, so now what? Well, what we're going to do is actually switch the order of integration. Now, this is a, a technique that you learn in, say, a third course in calculus. Um, and, and essentially, you're just, you're just switching the order of integration here. Okay, and we can do that because essentially, you can think of these um, infinities as, as constants, very loosely speaking. All right, so. Let's switch the order. So, in, you know, basically, we'll, I mean, you can put that in there if you like, and then switch the order of integration around. So instead of having sort of dp dx, we'll have dx dp. Okay. So now what? Well, what we're going to do is make uh, a substitution. Okay, we would like to, to get this back to some sort of just standard variable here instead of having a shift. All right, so I'm going to let, say, uh, x minus p be a new variable, q. Okay, so if that's the case, then um, dq. So in the inside integral, dq would be um, dx, okay, and um, x would be p plus q. So let's call this um, star, say. So hence star becomes all right. So huh? All right. So this is not going to change. G of x minus p is going to become g of q. Okay, now I haven't done it here, but you could shift that. Basically, if you wanted to get that out of there, you could shift it into the into here. Okay, it's not because the FFP has nothing to do with x right out here, so you could shift that out first. Um, and I'm going to get e to the negative i w p plus q. Okay, dq dp. Okay, so now what? Well, I can distribute the, the exponent out here. Now this has, again, this has nothing to do with, with uh, q, so I can do the following. Uh, 
Okay, I can bring that e to the negative i w q uh, p out because again that has nothing to do with q. Okay. And what's left? Well, I have g of q times e to the negative i w q. Okay. So essentially what I can do is split the double integral into the product of two single integrals. Okay? Why can I do that? Because the, inter the integrand here is basically the product of functions of one variable with functions of another variable. Okay, the important thing is this only, this only depends on q, this only depends on p. Okay, and the, the limits of integration you can think of as, as essentially constant. Okay, so um, if you expanded this out, then you could write it as the product of two single integrals. Now, I've, I've um, proved that, that, that kind of relationship in other videos. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, I've almost got what I want here. I want to get this. Now, this, if I, if I just take, say, say this, this actually is the transform of f. This isn't quite the transform of g because I don't have the, um, the uh, one on root 2 out the front. But that's okay because this, you know, this, this will work. Okay, so I've got f hat of w, that's that. And this is almost g hat, but it's g hat times root 2 pi. Okay. So this then is just and so we have got this holding. Okay, so that is a proof of the convolution theorem. As you can see, basically we just started with the definition and we just switched the order of integration, made a substitution and then relied on the fact that we could break this up into products of one, uh, functions of one variable times product of functions of another variable. Okay. Now, in other videos I'm going to show you the applications of the convolution theorem to partial differential equations, so the heat equation, Laplace's equation, etc. I hope you can join me for those presentations.